Uh, so my name is Nick Smolovsky. I'm going to be talking today about uh, optimizing right-of-way asset mapping with Bad Elf. You may be asking yourself what Bad Elf is, uh, and you wouldn't <laughs> you wouldn't be alone. So no, we do not make skateboards. Uh, we create affordable, um, alternative, low-cost GNSS. So we've heard from the last few presenters a bunch of different things about global positioning. GPS, in some ways, is the foundation of all of this mapping, all of this engineering, um, especially when talking about peripheral devices. Uh, Mateo asked me to introduce myself. Like I said, my name is Nick Smolovsky. I'm the Geospatial Solutions Director at Bad Elf. I've uh, been in the industry for uh, almost two decades in the, in the geospatial industry. Uh, suffice to say, um, you know, bumped my head a few times and I've seen a lot, uh, but we don't really need to go into my background. I've uh, been at Bad Elf now for about four years. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't quickly mention that Bad Elf uh, is keenly aware of the evolving digital twin, this idea of a smart city. Uh, if a digital twin is that near real-time representation, right, that near uh, real-time representation is helping stakeholders map, plan, simulate, integrate, monitor, and maintain physical assets. All of this uh, starts with the actual location of these assets and not just location, but high accuracy or highly accurate, highly precise, repeatable um, locations. And this is where standards come in. And this is why standards matter. If we want to have a digital representation of the real world uh, to utilize in the future to say mitigate pipe strikes and, and to increase safety and for management, et cetera, you've got to have that high location or that highly accurate location. So the Battle Flex is one of our flagship products I'd like to quickly talk to you about today. Uh, it has um, been out for a few years now. It's uh, fully survey grade. And, and one thing I mentioned over and over again, it's all about that accuracy. Um, depending on your project, depending on the needs of that right-of-way mapping, you can, you can see on the screen, we have a bunch of different ways to utilize the Flex. It's sort of like a Swiss army knife. You can use a base rover with a radio like you see on the left. You can use uh, VRS networks, RTK networks, third party, you name it. The, the thing about the Flex and Bad Elf in general is we play with everyone. We go to the dance with everyone. We are the epitome of inclusive. So our interoperability with other apps, such as Point Man, and if you go into Point Man, you can see there on the picture on the left, Bad Elf is one of the uh, GPSs integrated in Point Man, uh, among with, uh, or along with many other different types of GIS mapping applications and survey applications. One of the things Bad Elf offers is we have our standard uh, SDK available on GitHub. So if you would like to integrate uh, with us, we can do that. Uh, some of the integrations that I just quickly want to make mention of uh, is laser offset collection. I know we're talking about subsurface utilities, uh, but as Rob mentioned earlier, it's always important to know where your above ground utilities are as well. Oftentimes, those are indicators of where things are below ground. So if you can't get up to that attachment height or the top of the pole, you can integrate a laser rangefinder for high accuracy collection. Um, we also work with different utility locating um, devices. And so similarly, just as I mentioned with Point Man being the nexus there, you can use our high accuracy GNSS equipment like the Flex to get centimeter or better accuracy. Um, and then it can tie in um, here. Uh, to apps like Point Man. Now, I want to make mention, you've talked, we've heard standards, we've heard records, we've heard about metadata. One of the things that uh, Bad Elf's GPS engines do natively is we create a host of metadata that we pass through a NEMA stream. Fancy way to say we pass to your app so that you are collecting all of those pertinent data that organizations like CDOT want, right? So that's the metadata, the data about the data how good it is, what time of day, what types of satellites, what kind of connection, what kind of, uh, all of the things that make that data authoritative, we automatically are collecting. You've heard about GPR on this presentation, ground penetrating radar. We've got uh, bad off devices directly located in both you know, push cart GPRs, uh, but also you know, some of the larger devices that are being pulled behind vehicles. GPR is great. But GPR without a GPS or GNSS providing that actual spatial location sort of becomes irrelevant. If you don't know the actual uh, height of the ground, you know, what does it mean to be six inches or say 12 inches underneath? 
Uh, we integrate with augmented reality apps out there. So th uh, this is something coming alongside with the digital twin. And uh, we did some research uh, on the right hand side is actually a snapshot of um, uh, a research paper we did on utilizing GPS for augmented reality. In the in this study, uh, we tested out using a phone and or basically by itself, we tested out using a one meter GPS uh, from Bad Elf and then also a RTK grade uh, a, a receiver from Trimble. And uh, what we found out is, uh, long story short, because I don't have very much time, you can see all these crazy lines, but if you are using just a phone or tablet without external high accuracy GPS, you can't work in the world of augmented reality. And for that matter, you can't do true stakeouts. You can't relocate utilities correctly without high accuracy GPS. And you can see on the right hand side there, even a one meter a uh, device really helps. And once you get to a centimeter better, it really sticks everything into place. So augmented reality, the digital twin, this all requires authoritative geolocation, which starts with your GNSS. Luckily, uh, GPS, GNSS these days are, um, they're not quite what they used to be 10 years ago. Uh, back in the day, not all GPS were created equally, but through the democratization of technology, uh, uh, Honestly, a lot of the GPSs on the market are, are functioning at the same high level. So I just recommend doing your due diligence. Obviously, I'd love for you to be considering a bad elf device, but that's not necessarily um, you know, the only way you can get that high accuracy. I wanted to quickly mention uh, one of the companies we're working with in the Sioux space, the utility locating space is WGI. Along the lower part of the screen, I've just outlined a few different people doing GPR, total station work, mobile LIDAR, you've got drones, you've got utility locators, locators. you even have bathymetric LIDAR doing uh, scans underwater. WGI uses the Bad Elf Flex in many of these environments throughout the states. Um, and these data are being populated live to GIS databases. We talk about the ability to use this data real time or near real time for stakeholders and, uh, stakeholders and decision makers. The ability to disseminate this information quickly really helps the project life cycle. Additionally, WGI has done a lot of work. So as this, these data are coming in through the cloud, they are pre-populating or auto-populating reports. And these reports literally are some of the final deliverables that WGI is then presenting to their clients. I'll leave you with this, a quick final thought and looking forward to our discussion, but I'll leave you um, all right of way mapping and management starts with high accuracy location of assets. And without those things, it's gonna be a hard day uh, trying to stay within the right of way and you know collect authoritative data. So that's all I've got. Uh, back to you, Mateo. Uh, 